On today's Locked on Jayhawks, a preview of the Kansas-Iowa State game in Ames. Going to be a big one on Saturday night on ESPN. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Derek Johnson, you can hear me as well Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked On Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get any of your podcasts. You can like and subscribe to our show on our YouTube page. Thank you to all the everydayers out there. You can find and uh, content like our basketball content from past shows you can find football content like this we're previewing kansas versus iowa state big one on saturday night you can uh, watch it on espn at six you can listen to the game on klwn and 105.9 kiss your uh, home for the hawks in lawrence um before we get into any of that though Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase with Game Time. All right, so KU takes on Iowa State. It is a battle of a Kansas team who is six and two now ranked. How about this? Twenty first in the uh, college football playoff rankings. That was cool to see where kids popped up first time they've ever been ranked in the college football playoff rankings. Um, so they come in at six and two on the year. They're three and two in conference play. Iowa State is four and one in conference play. They're five and three overall. And Iowa State is part of the cluster of five teams that is tied for first in the Big 12 right now. So theoretically for Kansas, you go from playing first place team in the Big 12 last week to playing another first place of the Big 12 team this week. And I guess Oklahoma State's part of that too. So two weeks before the Oklahoma game, you were also playing first place team in the Big 12. Oh, and against Texas. So I guess that means for Kansas, like for their last five games, we're technically against first place in the Big 12 teams in some way of thinking about it. And that's the case for this one. Kansas leads the all-time series 51 to 45, six ties in the middle. Iowa State's up 25 to 23 with two ties in the games that have been played in Ames. But it's been a long time since KU has won a game in Ames, Iowa. Kansas has not won in Ames since 2008. And they haven't won back-to-back against Iowa State, which they're trying to do in this one because they won last year, since they won five straight from 2005 to 2009. Um, Obviously, last year's game was interesting. It was a lower-scoring defensive game. KU was, you know, just downbeaten in the second half, couldn't really do anything in the second half on offense. Uh, But the defense really stepped up in the Iowa State game a season ago, and Iowa State missed a billion kicks, and you end up getting the win at the time. That put Kansas at 5-0. So your top storylines coming into this one, uh, KU trying to avoid a letdown after that gigantic win over Oklahoma. It's very easy, and we see this all the time in college football. Team gets up for a big win. You have the big dominant win, and then the next week you look kind of flat. And against Iowa State, a good Iowa State team who's really rolling right now, playing on the road, if you look flat in this game, it's going to be tough to win the game. So the the biggest things about the teams that are consistently really good is that they not only win the big games, but they show consistency and they're able to, you know, uh, not have the the flat-footed, natural game that would come after that um so the the part about kansas being a big 12 title contender well this is the natural follow-up okay you beat one of the other top teams show you can do that can you follow it up by beating a team who is still really good but is more of a game that you have to avoid that letdown to win for and iowa state is tied first in the big 12 so you know this is storyline for them in that if they win this game gets them to bowl eligibility and we'll put them at five and one in conference play. And all of a sudden, maybe you do start taking Iowa state seriously as being a big 12 title contender. So uh, really from, from either standpoint, this is kind of a game that it feels like eliminates one of the teams from making you feel like they're part of that group. Whereas for the winner, it feels like, okay, maybe they're kind of hanging on to the dark horse moniker from, from that standpoint. Uh, But that's a big part of this as well. Uh, Beyond that, Jason Bean or Jalen Daniels continues to be a storyline coming into this game. I'm recording this uh, beforehand, and who knows, maybe there will be a story or another report from Brett Murphy or Pete Thamel that comes out. So I'm not going to speculate on uh, what exactly is going to happen at quarterback based on the comments we heard earlier this week from Lance Leipold. He was asked, what is it going to take to for Jalen Daniels to reclaim the starting spot? And he said Jalen Daniels is the starter when he's healthy. But as of right now, he's not the starter. Well, what does that tell us? And that was on a Monday. 
that Jason Bean was still got the guy getting the reps. So if I, you know, gun to my head, I have to make a guess. I'm going with Jason Bean, but again, I'm recording this beforehand, so I'm not privy to maybe some other knowledge that came throughout the rest of the week. It would not shock me as much as it would the past couple weeks if it was Jalen Daniels, but I guess I'm still almost under the assumption a little bit that it's going to be Jason Bean. Again, egg on my face. This could look completely wrong. As far as the Iowa State scouting report, mentioned they're five and three on the air. They've been a team that's really picked things up lately. So early in the season, uh, they had to overcome some of the stuff from the offseason. Their starting running back and their starting quarterback both had some of the, the gambling stuff that led to them being like kicked off the, the team and suspended indefinitely, whatever the, the terms were used for Iowa State. And so they had to overcome some of that stuff, some new players in. You have a freshman quarterback in Rocco Beck. They had some early season struggles. You lose to Iowa, seven-point game. And at the time, Iowa had a healthy Cade McNamara quarterback. And that was a – you know, Iowa defense is really good. So tough to go against for the uh, the, the young Rocco Beck. Next week, though, was was b- the bigger indictment. They lose 10-7 to to Ohio. And Ohio has been a, a pretty good um, team so far in the MAC. Like, they've been a solid team. So yeah, you're playing them on the road to – uh, there was the field goal that kind of looked like it might have been good from Iowa State, but was called no good. I don't know. Uh, just some weird stuff kind of happened. You just get upset on the road. Since then, you've won four or five games. The only loss was to Oklahoma for Iowa State. And they've won uh, a couple or three strike games here. Two of them, they've scored 30 points. The win over Oklahoma State that they had, they put up 34 points. So they're starting to get it going. Overall, the offense has not been great, though, this year. 82nd on offense on ESPN SB+. Plus for Iowa State. They are 13th of the 14 teams in the Big 12 in points per game. They are uh, 13th in the Big 12 in yards per game. They are 13th in the Big 12 in yards per play. So this has not been a great Iowa State offense. But again, they're playing better than that right now. It's like when you played Oklahoma State. You didn't value them where they were. They were playing better than that. And we've seen since then they played even better. Rocco back to young freshman quarterback. He's going to have his ups and downs, but he's pretty good. He's mobile. He'll get out and make some plays. Uh, Iowa State's 11th in the Big 12 in passing yards per play. Iowa State is 11th in rushing yards per play. And again, 13th in overall total yards per play. Uh, the blocking has not been good for Iowa State. They are 124th in the country in pass blocking grade on Pro Football Focus. They are 127th in run blocking grade on Pro Football Focus. This should be a game that you should be able to win at the line of scrimmage. They don't have a ton of make-you-miss weapons. They do have a couple good receivers. Noel is somebody they like to get the ball in in his hands in short yardage. And then uh, they've got the other stud receiver on the outside. But outside of that, they don't have a ton of just, you know, unbelievable athletes, whether it's a running back or some of the skills positions. They are second in the Big 12 in red zone scoring rate. So this hasn't been a great offense overall, but when they're getting to the red zone, they are taking advantage of it and they kind of have to with the offense they have. And that's interesting because KU defensively is last in the Big 12 in red zone scoring defense to this point. So that could be something to, to keep an eye on in this game. Now, defensively for Iowa State, that's where they, they bred their butter. They are 10th in the country, not the Big 12, 10th in the country on ESPN SP Plus in defensive efficiency. Top 10 defense. They are giving up just 19.8 points per game. They're leading the Big 12 in yards allowed per play. They are uh, also 10th on pro football focus in coverage grade. So they're they're unbelievable coverage, um, which backs up with some of their stats. Like they are, you know, one of the top defenses in completion percentage begins, yards per pass against, like interceptions, all that stuff. This is a really good pass defense. Uh, They don't rank as well in the pass rush game, oddly enough. Um, despite being such a good defense, they're more of a coverage defense than they are a pass rush defense. Uh, they're not a great tackling team, uh, either. So that could be something maybe you can find a way to run the ball, but overall, even despite that they are third in the big 12 in yards allowed per carry. Basically they're the same number right now as Oklahoma is, which you did have success, but that's going to be the challenge. Can you run the football to avoid having to pass against a really good pass defense? Problem is, Iowa State's been pretty good against the run as well. Special teams-wise, they're 33rd on ESPN SP+. They are 39th on ESPN's FPI. So this is a pretty good special teams unit. You can't continue to have some of the mistakes you've had over the last couple games that you've shown. Uh, we're going to continue on with our matchups of the game and our Hawks to soar. But first, this episode of the show is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite sporting event shouldn't be stressful. It should be fun because the event you're going to go to, whether it is sporting event, comedy, music theater, is going to be a lot of fun. Maybe you're going up to Ames 
for the Saturday trip for a late night game at six o'clock. We shouldn't be stressed out about, oh, we have to buy tickets before we get there. You can look at them on the road. You can look at them once you get to Ames because of game time. You can get last minute tickets on everything and it's going to make it less stressful. I promise you that. They have flash deals, last minute tickets. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. You can see the images of the views from all all the different seats, and they have lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and more. Get your exclusive flash deal tickets on football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the best set in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, download the Game Time app, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Our matchups of the game. Let's start with first down. Kansas wide receivers trying to win against the Iowa State DBs. Now, it's not always man coverage. Uh, talk to Andy Kolnicki, and, and he was saying why are they so good at coverage. Well, a lot of teams are going to drop seven guys back on the normal play. Normal play, you're you're bringing your four man rush. Seven guys are are in coverage. Obviously, there's blitzes here there. Iowa State is going to uh, rush three guys, and they're going to send eight guys back in coverage. So it just it tightens up holes and windows and, and zone coverages just a little bit more. And whether it is man or zone, the K receivers are going to have to win with either their smarts against the zone or with their skills against the DBs. Iowa State is just great all around in pass coverage. They're both ball hawking and they limit you. They are second in the conference in interceptions. So that's going to be something to watch for. Try to avoid those costly interceptions that last two games you've now thrown a couple of them. I don't know that you can get away with that in this game. TJ Tampa, he's all conference level. He's all American level. He's NFL level player at the corner position for Iowa State. Really good player. He's got an 86 grade on pro football focus. The slot corner has an 84 pro football focus grade. Their safeties are graded 77 and 73. Even their other corner is a 67, which is the quote unquote weak link uh, compared to the other guys. But if your weak link is an 80 is a 67 on pro football focus, I'm telling you that is very good. And overall, the product of it, Iowa State ranks first in the Big 12 in yards allowed per pass attempt. They rank first in the Big 12 in completion percentage against. They're also first in passer efficiency against defensively. And the gap between them and Kansas State, who's second, is larger than the gap between second place Kansas State and sixth place TCU. So this is by far or been the best pass coverage defense in the Big 12. Now, there are questions about, well, the schedule they've played, like they've played Cincinnati and Baylor and some easier teams than maybe like a Kansas has played with having to play Texas and Oklahoma already and UCF, who's got an explosive offense in Oklahoma State, although Iowa State played Oklahoma State too. You look at the Oklahoma game, OU was able to throw the ball very well against Iowa State, over 300 yards easily for Dylan Gabriel. I think they had 23 completions, something like that, for like 350. So they were able to throw the ball really well against Iowa State, but a lot of the other teams have not. Is that partially a schedule thing? Is it because Iowa State's so good? Is it because Oklahoma just is really good and had a good day? I, I don't know where everything lies in the middle, but you go into this game expecting Iowa State to be really good at pass coverage. KU's receivers are ranked ninth in the country on pro football focus in receiving grade. And the beauty of having multiple options, which this team does, you don't have, you know, Lawrence Arnold's leading the team with 400 yards. If there were less options or this was a different offense that passes more or one that directed more to the top guys as opposed to spreading it out, Lawrence Arnold would be an all-conference level receiver. But because you have multiple options and you do spread it around, the beauty of that is if TJ Tampa takes away one of your guys, the other guys can win. Problem is with Iowa State, they have more guys than Tampa too who are uh, good at, at covering. So can KU win enough to get this game on the road and get openings for Jason Bean to throw the ball to because it's going to be tough all day long? Second down, the KU offensive line versus the Iowa State multiple front, mainly in the running game. It stresses you mentally with the 3-3-5 three, three, that they run or the 3-2-6 or however they're going to do it at different times. Three high safeties for Iowa State, three down linemen. And when you look at it, it means a lot of different from blitzes could come. It means you don't know who's always coming on certain plays. You know, there are different ways that you have to block. So it stresses you mentally figuring out where to go with it. Good news is KU's offensive line is experienced and Mike Nowitzki leading the way. But beyond that, Iowa State's front is good. Like Orange and, and Yonyadim have been studly on the defensive line. Uh, KU's offensive line has been a strength all season long. And that goes last week. You have zero sacks, three tackles for loss. That's it. That's all Oklahoma had a week ago against you. 
So these are two strengths kind of going up against each other. Iowa State's not a great pass rush team, though. Part of that's them only bringing three guys. They're only 12th in the Big 12 of the 14 team in sacks. So it's less about the pass rush. It's more about the how you do against the run. Because as we said, Iowa State, great coverage team. Can Kansas counter that by saying, oh, we don't need to throw that much. We can just run the ball. And in pretty much all of KU's games, except Oklahoma State, they've been able to do that. But Oklahoma State runs kind of a similar defense to Iowa State, which is a little bit scary there. It makes you struggle a little bit more in your some of your perimeter runs and your outside runs. And the D-line has been good, good against the run for Iowa State. So KU is going to need to run the football well. The offensive line has their hands full, not just blocking the D-line, but I guess getting to the second level and blocking some of those linebackers too. Third down matchup, KU edge players against the Iowa State offensive tackles. Iowa State's offensive line, as I mentioned, the, the, the pass blocking grades are not great, or the pass and run blocking grades not great. Bottom 10 in the country in both. But it's mainly the two tackles. Their interior guys have been okay. The offensive tackles on pro football focus for Iowa State, 38 and 48. Those are the two overall grades of the two offensive tackles. Enter Austin Booker, Jeremy Robinson, both coming off big games. Hayden Hatcher, Patrick Joyner, some J.B. Brown when, when he moved down there, and company. KU is currently tied first in the Big 12. They have 20 sacks on the defensive side of the ball. This is a position that is a huge reason why, that defensive end spot. They provided so much pressure and sack and chaos for KU. Iowa State somehow, though, despite having bad pass blocking grades, they've given up the least amount of sacks in the Big 12 at just six, which I, I think sometimes that number can be a little misleading. Uh, maybe Iowa State's throwing the ball quickly to avoid that. Maybe Iowa State's running the ball a ton. Maybe Iowa State is has a, a mobile quarterback who's able to avoid some of the sacks after the offensive line lose the play. Um, maybe they use a lot of tight ends and running backs to help block after the offensive line loses the play. The tight end helps pick them up, right? A combo of all those things. Um, but they've done a good job at avoiding it nonetheless. But dominate this game, make them change their game plan and what they have to do in the extra pass blocker bring back. Fourth down, KU's fourth down aggressiveness. KU right now is 13th of the 14 teams in the Big 12 in fourth down attempt. So basically only one team in the Big 12 has tried less fourth downs than Kansas, which is kind of odd because they have a really good offense, right? And, and one that should be good at converting. But the problem is they haven't been great at converting the fourth downs this year. They're also 13th in fourth down conversion rate. So not only are they attempting them low, they're converting them low. And up until the last two that they had against Oklahoma, they were one for nine on the season, which was last at the time. But they converted their last two, including the important one with Jason being Lawrence Arnold, uh, to, to now make it to that they're uh, three of 11 on the season. But Iowa State's not been a great fourth down defense. Been great defense overall. Fourth downs, teams have converted 57% against Iowa State, which is fourth best in the Big 12. So in a game where Iowa State struggled a bit on fourth downs, where maybe you found your rhythm a little bit on fourth downs, and in a game where they're going to probably, because they have a good defense, you're going to be faced with probably a lot of decisions to go for a, do I go for this fourth and two? Do I kick a field goal? Do I go for this fourth and three? Do I punt the ball away? Do I go for this fourth and four or what? You know, in a game where they have a good defense to force you to those fourth downs, you're going to have more decisions should you go for it or not. And I think especially on the road where you're actually technically the betting underdog here, where you have a good offense, I think it makes sense in a lot of ways to, to maybe go for more fourth downs. I'm going to say I'm going for every one. Um, and part of that will be based on the game script and what happens kind of throughout, like is your defense playing well and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, but I think it behooves Kansas to be a little bit more aggressive in this game. As far as our player matchup, Jaden Higgins versus Kobe Bryant. Jaden Higgins is the stud Iowa State receiver. He has, uh, is a big play receiver, averaging nearly 20 yards per reception. He's really good on the outside. They don't have a ton of great weapons. They, they throw the tight ends a good amount and all that stuff. And uh, They like to run the ball here and there. But um, Higgins and Noel are the two guys to watch. Higgins mainly. If you can take him away, it becomes really hard for this Iowa State offense. Now, I don't know that it'll always be Kobe Bryant. We'll see the, the injury status of Melo Dotson and, you know, Kalen Gervin. Could you get to him on, on certain times? But if it is Kobe Bryant, he's only been targeted three times over the last two games. He's given up a total of 13 yards. And in the o OU game, he was only targeted once, gave up five yards. All five yards were after catch, meaning it was on a screen. So realistically, he didn't give up any catches. And uh, if he can take out Higgins, that is a huge advantage for KU. But if Higgins has a big game, that's how the Iowa State offense gets going. All right, we're going to continue on with Locked on Jayhawks with our Hawks to soar players to watch for the Jayhawks. This episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by Prize Picks. You can have a ton of fun with Prize Picks, picking more or less 
on two to six different players. You can cross sports. You can do college football, NFL, and MLB. You can pick two from each. You can pick one from each. You can do the NBA. You can do all on college football. You can do all from the same game if you want. It has to be for multiple teams. Uh, so if you're looking at, at going into this game, I think it's going to be pretty apparent that KU is going to need uh, the running game to get going. So Devin Neal, I like the more on that. Otherwise, it's probably not a great sign for KU. But I think Daniel Highshaw is the big one. Daniel Highshaw is the big that, that I like more on if that's going to be up there because you're going to have to run the ball physically against Iowa State. And he, he got hurt against Iowa State last year, and you missed some of that physicality in the second half, and there obviously was a difference in the KU offense in the second half. So I like the the mores on both of those. Um, you'll be able to get on other college football ones as well. Go to prizepicks.com slash college and use code college for – our first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college with code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Our Hawks to soar in this one, basically players to watch. We go to the offensive and the defensive side of the football. Well, the offensive side of the football, I, I think it is Daniel High shot at me. So when I look back to the Oklahoma State game, a team who plays that similar defense to what Iowa State does, but Iowa State was kind of the, the, the team who started it. It's tough to run on the outside. We saw that with those speed option plays. The outside just didn't work. You might be able to run a bit on the inside. Iowa State still got a good running defense, but with as good of a pass coverage team as they are, KU's going to have to run the football. And so you have to provide that physicality between the tackles. Devin Neal can do it too. He's good at it too. But Daniel Hyshaw is a battering ram through the middle. So he's my, my offensive player to watch for KU there. Um, I, I think from the defensive side of the ball for Kansas, I mentioned the, the Iowa State offensive tackles have struggled a bit this season. And for that notion, give me Jeremy Robinson. I could go with Austin Booker. He's been great too. But I want to go Robinson because, you know, Robinson and Booker combined for seven pressures against Oklahoma. Booker had four, Robinson had three. And it was Robinson who had the big hit um, on Dylan Gabriel on the play before the last play. So the one with eight seconds, not three seconds, to kind of force an incompletion there. I think Robinson is in store to have a, a big game here in this one against the offensive tackles. Uh, maybe they put, because the, the way that Iowa State plays with a lot of tight ends, maybe they say, okay, our tackles have struggled. Let's put tight end or running back help on the side with Austin Booker. Well, maybe that could mean more one-on-ones for Jeremy Robinson, and he has a big game in this one for KU. Uh, that'll do it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. We will have a uh, recap of whatever happens between KU and Iowa State. Uh, we'll look at some more basketball, KU North Carolina Central next Monday, more KU football with Texas Tech the following week, and plenty more to come at you with Locked on Jayhawks. Make sure you're subscribed anywhere you get your podcasts and or on our YouTube page. And thank you to all the everydayers out there. See you next time with LOJ.